Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to improve Arsenal. But before that, if you want to see more Statman Dave content, then come and check us out on Twitch, where we stream Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, where I discuss all things football, previewing and reviewing the weekend's games, giving out FPL tips, and a little bit of Football Manager. Anyway, let's get this party started. After a positive transfer window and picking up 9 out of their opening 12 points available, Arsenal look to be on the up. But since then, they've lost 3 of the next 4 games, scoring just once in that period against a very lacklustre Manchester United. So today we're going to be looking at how Mikel Arteta can improve Arsenal. Arteta has done well since his appointment, stabilising the side and adding more control into Arsenal's game. Since his appointment, only Manchester City Wolves and Manchester United have conceded fewer goals per game than the Gunners. And this is exactly what they needed when he took over. But it's come at some cost in terms of their attacking output. Their XG per game is just 1.2 under the Spaniard. But what's even worse is they're taking on average just 9.5 shots per game, which is only worsened by West Brom and Sheffield United, two teams heavily threatened by relegation. The result is that the 2020-21 Premier League season has seen Arsenal score just nine goals in their opening eight games. The worst start to a season in a goal scoring sense since the 98-99 season. To put simply, Arsenal need to score more goals. If they can find a balance between a solid defence and a good attack, they'll be just in the right place. But how can they do this? First up, I think it's time for a switch in system. I think the 3-4-3 has done Arsenal well, winning the back-to-back -back finals, but the extra defender isn't going to fix that goal-scoring problem. This season, we've seen the wide forwards operating from wider positions, more like inverted wingers, being supported by inverted fullbacks. Looking at the skill set of Arsenal's forwards, they don't really suit receiving the ball out wide and creating, but instead are more goal scorers, who should be used closer to goal where they can get shots away. Even the wing backs, whilst they can perform that inverted role, are filled with energy and pace, so are underutilised in an inverted role and perhaps should be suited to a more traditional overlapping role. I think the 3 4 3 is still good for the bigger games, but right now Arsenal need goals week in, week out, so I'd like to see a change to a 4 3 3, using inside forwards and traditional wing backs. Next up, Arsenal need to get a Bemiang firing again. The Gabon forward is without question one of the best goal scorers in the world, but this season he's been a shadow of his former self. He scored just once from open play in the Premier League. Whilst that looks bad on service, it gets even worse when you look at it a little bit closer. He's taken just 1.1 shots per game this season, 50% of what he averaged last season under Arteta, and his non-penalty XG is at just 0.49. So a Bemiang is not only failing to get shots off, but he's failing to get into good goal scoring positions as well. Although he has become more creative playing on the left wing. He tops Arsenal in chances created, big chances created and expected assists. But that's more of an indictment of Arsenal than praise for a Bemiang. And if Arteta can get him firing, Arsenal's form will follow. He's consistently been one of the best finishers in the world. And even with this slump, this season, he's still ranked number one in the Premier League for shooting goals added since Arteta's appointment. Shooting goals added is basically a measurement of how well a player is finishing his chances. So the question here is how to create those chances for a Bemiang. I think there's two major changes that need to be made. The first is a simple one, play your best central midfield pairing. Thomas Partey is and should be one of the first names on the team sheet but he's mainly been partnered with Mohamed El Nene. No offence to the Egyptian, but he works hard and follows instructions well, but I don't really understand why he's been in the side with three centre-backs behind him. He could be used in front of a back four to shield as long as he doesn't interrupt party building a partnership with Danny Ceballos. The Spaniard is a very busy midfielder and is the only central midfielder in the squad that can truly unlock a defence. Arsenal's best attack in play this season has been when Ceballos has been on the pitch. His ability to find a through ball is unmatched in the Arsenal squad, either finding it inside the fullback to feed a nominal winger or looking for a run in behind the defence, like he did for Lacazette against Liverpool. Danny Ceballos' skill set is unique within Arteta's squad, often using a more reserved role. I'd like to see him played as a number eight alongside Partey, freeing up the pair to use their energy and attacking intent to create chances in the final third. Whilst the second involves Willian, the former Chelsea man has been poor this season. Other than a hat-trick of assists on the opening day of the season, he's been very quiet and has created just five chances in the six games since the opening day. And I would be getting him out the side for last season's big buy, Nicolas Pepe. The current setup on the right-hand side of the back three of Bellerin, Willian and El Nene 
doesn't fully use the dangerous inside channel. We saw this against Manchester United. El Nene in possession, he carries and plays it to Bellerin, who works it wide to Willian. He runs short, but ends up going back to Bellerin. At this moment, El Nene has a great opportunity to underlap and exploit a big hole behind United defence. But he holds his position and Bellerin sends in a good cross that Saka heads over. The system creates this space in the inside channels, but the current setup, Arsenal aren't exploiting this, especially on the right-hand side. One way that they could do this is to rock that triangle with the right winger moving inside, the right back moving wide and the central midfielder providing the support, thus getting the right winger into perfect goal scoring positions. Again, something that Nicolas Pepe is so good at doing. The frustration for Arsenal and Arteta is they're so close to being really, really good and they need to tweak what they're doing slightly to get there, moving away from Pep's way and thinking a little bit towards Jurgen Klopp's. During Arteta's management, Pepe and Ceballos have been Arsenal's two top chance creators. Not just in terms of raw chance creation, but in terms of expected assists per 90 as well. Even with persisting with the back three, Ceballos greatly exceeds El Nene in almost every metric, from progressive passes to shot creating actions, as well as you might expect to tackles, interceptions and pressures, as you might not expect. And getting in an extra midfielder will allow Ceballos to get higher up the pitch and slip those through balls into the channels for pacey forwards like a Bemiang to thrive off. In terms of Pepe adding in another goal threat, who not only can create for the team, but for Abemiang in particular. Now, an Arsenal player assisted Abemiang more in the Premier League last season than Pepe. But Pepe's natural, more narrow position that he likes to operate from the inside right channel should free up wide space for Hector Bellerin to overlap. Bellerin has arguably been Arsenal's standout player in recent weeks. He's been directly involved in Arsenal's last three goals in the Premier League. But with Williams starting ahead of him, who usually takes up those wide positions, he's often taken up an inverted position where he can either play a through ball or make underlapping runs which are fairly difficult to pull off. By playing Pepe ahead of him, a left footer that naturally comes inside will create space for a much more common and easy to execute overlap, getting Bellerin into the final third and on the move. But this will take instruction from Arteta. When Nicolas Pepe has been used, he's often been taken up really wide starting positions where he isn't used to influencing the game. You think back to the 33 goal involvement season for Lille that got him to his move to Arsenal, it came a lot from operating closer to goal, often in the penalty area. In the recent 3-0 loss to Aston Villa, you see a frustrated Pepe. Gabriel in possession of his own half. He switches out wide to Pepe on the touchline. Pepe carries and goes back to Bellerin, who looks for Nketiah. Mings reads it and intercepts, but Nketiah knocks it to Pepe, who gets a shot off that has an XG of just 0.03, which means three out of the 100 times it goes in. For all Bellerin's form, you want the pair to be in each other's positions. So when Gabriel switches it out, it goes to Bellerin who not only is more comfortable on going on the outside of a defender, but when the ball goes back, Pepe, a left-footed forward, is receiving. So when it goes inside, not only could he pass to Nketiah, that could be better executed, but he can also get a shot off from that better position. Getting both Ceballos and Pepe into the side is key, but I also think Arsenal should be playing Aubameyang centrally and getting another crater on the left wing in Saka. This season, Arsenal have largely looked to create chances through crosses often with their wingers crossing for a striker, but Lacazette isn't the best aerially. During his time under Arteta, the Frenchman has scored just twice from 28 headed shots. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang isn't world class with his head, with three goals from 17 headed shots, but three of those goals have come from his last seven headed shots, which suggests a recent improvement. This method of chance creation is fine, but I'd like to see the crosses being sent in by the fullbacks, with the forwards inside in the box, and the deliveries to be more whipped, a lot like how Liverpool cross. In fact, they're 43 headed goals with an incredible 21.2% conversion rate since the 1st of February 2018 is the best in the Premier League. Salah, Mane and Firmino aren't genuine aerial threats, but they score a lot of headed goals because usually the fullback puts pace on the cross, meaning they need to guide it into the corner. Meanwhile, Arsenal usually favoured more floated deliveries, which require the forward to generate power, thus making it more difficult to score from. A little bit more whip and you'd see the Gunners scoring more goals from those situations. But the big change is moving a Bemiang centrally. The striker needs a change to kick on this season. And as we mentioned, he's better in the air than Lacazette. So should be a better target for those crosses, whether they're floated or whipped. He's also good at linking the play, so he wouldn't break the system by being there. Something that we see Lacazette in the side for, linking and his defensive work, but a Bemiang can do that.
that. See the chance he created for Saka versus Man City. After a scrappy period of play, Tierney has the ball. He carries and plays it to Saka, who then plays it back. A little bit of a one-two with a Bemiang and hits it straight at Edison. A really good chance created by a Bemiang as a number nine. It'd also allow Arteta to get his brightest future star in Bakayo Saka into an attacking position on the left wing, using his natural wide men out wide, which would make Arsenal more fluid, especially in a 4-3-3, which offers good opportunities to create passing triangles, especially between the winger, fullback, and outside midfielder, before using underlaps and third man runs. We saw this in Arsenal's winner against West Ham. Zaka in possession, he goes sideways to Ceballos, who plays it wide to Saka. Saka comes inside, waits, and then slips Ceballos back in, who puts it on a plate for Enketia to grab the winner. A lovely move from Arsenal, but if we take it back, you can see the problems caused by passing triangles and underlaps. First, Aubameyang takes the attention of the wing-back, which creates space for Saka to receive in. Then, as the wing-back closes Saka down, it opens up space for Ceballos to exploit the underlap. Then, with Aubameyang moving away from the play, he puts the defender in two minds. Does he close down Ceballos or Aubameyang? But before he decides, it's too late and Ceballos has been slipped in and Arsenal win the game. The 4-3-3 and the 3-4-3 are very similar formations, especially when implemented by Mikel Arteta. But the back four offer more flexibility and fluidity, which is really missing from the Arsenal setup right now. A third midfielder slot allows an extra attacker like Saka or even Willian. Whilst playing natural, wingers will create natural width and balance the attack, especially when supplemented by attacking fullbacks in Kieran Tierney, who's got very, very good delivery from those wide areas, and Hector Bellerin or even playing Xhaka in defensive midfield to look for direct balls in behind. But what's key to improving Arsenal without transfers is moving Aubameyang centrally, getting Nicolas Pepe in on the right as an inside forward and pairing Arsenal's best midfielders, Thomas Partey and Danny Ceballos. Then a move for Hossam Awar, when the transfer window opens, completely finishes off the team. But anyway guys, what do you think? How would you improve Arteta's Arsenal? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. Of course, make sure to jump over to Twitch and find us over there. We've got loads of banging content and we will see you next time thanks for watching if you've enjoyed this video why not check out some more content on the statman dave youtube channel